Okay, so uh, hi everyone, my name is Patrick. Um, I'm a senior project manager with BuildOps. Um, a brief description of what BuildOps is, essentially it's a hard hat mounted 360 degree camera. Uh, and with that, we capture software that, he, that takes images of the entire construction site. We then overlay that with a 3D BIM model. Um, and what we do is we try to form a continuously updated, always accurate digital twin. Um, our main client base are typically general contractors, main contractors, developers, but increasingly over the last few months, we're actually being engaged by a lot of clients, um, which is something the anonymous poster was kind of saying that it needs to come from top down. We're now being engaged by clients to, to uh, work with contractors um, for transparency and help to the, their overall project go smoother. Um, on average, BuildOps will capture around 100,000 images, if not more, of the life cycle of the project. Uh, and this wealth of data can then be used long after the construction phase has ended. And the way the captures work is essentially we give our client the hardware, uh, their site managers will then do the captures on site. And this is as simple as pressing record on the beginning of the uh, site walk and then clicking stop at the end. All the individual then needs to do is to upload that file to that laptop, which is where we take over. Um, our deep learning AI algorithms pretty much do the rest. Um, so the first two things we do when we engage with a client is ask for their BIM model and their program. Their, specifically their construction program. Um, what we do then is we link the activities in their construction program to the elements within their BIM model. So for example, whatever the contractor defines as first fix electrical, our AI will assign that to everything in the model that's considered first fix electrical. Um, I know it's a bit cliche to say, but the more detailed the program, the more detailed the model, the better analysis that we can do and the more benefits we can give to our clients. So what happens here is our 360 degree um, camera captures and overlays it with the model, as you can see on the right hand side here, <clears throat> essentially a panoramic view, 360 degrees. And this is then used for design verification, clash detection and snagging, as well as a lot of other uses which I'll touch on shortly. Um, so as I said, we typically sit on around 100,000 images of the entire life cycle of your project, um, each of which we overlay with the model. Uh, we suggest to our clients that they do captures somewhere around twice a week. Um, and it's pretty much the, the frequency of captures depends heavily on the complexity of the project. So a high-end commercial fit out might typically require more frequent captures than a traditional residential or infrastructure scheme because they are usually slower paced. Um, the turnaround in our analysis is something we're quite proud of as well. It's currently between 12 and 24 hours, um, but we're trying to get that that down to below 12. And the reason for that is a lot of software out there often takes upwards of a week to turn around the analysis. And as someone who's worked for a main contractor in the US, uh, I don't particularly want to know how my site was one week ago. I want to know how it was yesterday. And uh, it's far more important information. Um, the software we use is this deep learning AI algorithm that essentially looks for what it defines as a power socket, for example. And the concept behind deep learning is a lot like the, the analogy I'm about to describe to you, which please excuse the following slide of a few dogs, but uh, it's a, the, the crux of it is, if you'd never seen a dog before, and I showed you a picture of, of a Rottweiler on the left and a Chihuahua on the right, it might be difficult to make the conclusion that they're the same species. But if I showed you 10,000 images of dogs, you're bound to come across 50 or 60 Rottweilers and 50 or 60 Chihuahuas, in which case it's very easy to make the connection that they're the same species. Deep learning AI algorithms are a very similar principle. If I, if I show our AI algorithm, 10,000 wood doors, hollow metal doors, um, double sockets, single sockets, uh, all types of light fixtures, it can suddenly identify that much quicker than the system. So it's one of these things that the more information we feed it, the better and better it gets. <clears throat> so I'll just briefly walk you through a bit what, what the BIM background is to what we do. Um, and this is a new section that we haven't actually um, released yet on our platform. It's coming out, I think, next week. Um, and as you can see, this example here is for sprinklers. Um, and you can look at progress, uh, planned versus actual. Um, and where you see the separation between planned versus actual isn't always the fault of the subcontractor in question. In this instance, the, it was the fault of the previous sub for not having done their activities in time and then causing knock-on delays for uh, other subcontractors. So in the work area section down here, uh, we highlight areas that are ready for sprinkler work to take place. And this is done by once again looking at the captures we take and using the BIM model to determine whether the previous activity in the contractor's program has been completed uh, to allow for the following activity to take place. Um, and this is all done automatically and automated. 
Um, this is a loose ends tab. And what this does, as you can see with the overlay of the BIM model, there's an actual fixture that's been missed here. Um, and we define this as loose end and specifically we don't define it as an error. And I'll go into that in a moment. Um, but because it's modeled in the BIM, it's tracked. And the point being here is we essentially look at this as a pre-snagging tool. <clears throat> the fact that <clears throat> the capture may have been done on a Thursday and the following Friday morning is flagged, hey, your electrician may have forgotten a socket here and it's recorded and it's tracked and everybody knows about it. Um, on the next slide you'll see, and this is where we define errors. So an error is where something's been installed incorrectly. Um, the tolerance within our system is around five mil, <clears throat> but depends heavily on the speed at which the individual walks the site uh, and a few other factors. So this example, the, the way it's different to loose ends is not having installed a power socket isn't necessarily considered incorrect, but this example here with the grill being located in the, in, in the wrong place is labeled as incorrect. Um, I'm sure we can all agree that the error here is, isn't a huge one, but it's, uh, it's something that our clients want to keep track of and keep record, either to keep in their back pockets for when the mechanical subcontractor inevitably approaches them with a variation or change order, or just to ensure that, they, that everything is being installed as part of the design. Um, I have to be a little careful about sharing this image because it's from one of our live projects in the UK. So you'll have to uh, excuse my terrible job at blurring the surrounding. Um, but this is from a 315 unit residential project here in the UK. Uh, and it had 15 site managers, none of which picked up the fact that, as you can see, the BIM model overlaid on the photo suggests that there's a door supposed to be located here. And it's pretty quickly identified that through our AI system that there is no door. And the point here is the fact that 15 site managers, as well as the subcontractor of fault here, no one spotted this. But the moment we came on site, within a day of this work being complete, it had been flagged to the contractor. And importantly, at no cost to the contractor to remedy this error. Um, so this is obviously the BIM outline uh, for, for, from the 3D model. And it's identified and rectified. As you can see here, it was spot on 3rd September and it was closed out within 10 days. Um, and the question we now ask ourselves is, if not for build-ups, when would it have been spotted? It, it's, it's easy to say that, oh, this won't happen on my project. I know that would have been my mentality, but the reality is that it very much might happen on your project. Um, so when trying to quantify this, it's kind of a tricky thing. So what I've tried to do is pretty much, my, my approach has been take the worst case scenario and the best case scenario and essentially divide by two and find a midpoint. Um, and that's kind of a start where we're trying to figure out how we price, how much we've saved for this example. So we've figured that we've saved our client not only money, but also time. Um, and also the headaches that typically come with an error like this and the finger pointing and the blame game and the 100, 100 emails that go back and forth between uh, the contractor and the sub or the client or the designer, it instantly removes all that because it catches this before it becomes a problem. And the only cost that was incurred for this error to be remedied was to the subcontractor himself who had done something wrong. And this is an example now. As part of our so software, you can actually verify the design uh, in a side-by-side -side view with the actual model, as you can see. So if you look at something within your project, um, maybe doesn't seem like it should be an error, you can quickly click on the top right button that says th compare to 3D model. And then you can quickly verify that, in fact, there is indeed supposed to be a door here or a socket here or a light switch here. Um, so having that instant verification, the ability to just check and confirm without having to you know, go through your uh, 100 drawings or go through a few RFIs, the ability to check this instantly um, is a pretty powerful uh, asset. So. How have we been affected by COVID? Um, so our usage has actually increased in the four weeks after the lockdown compared to the four weeks before. And the average clicks per user has increased. So meaning that staff that are, that are now working from home are able to virtually access and walk their site. Um, with the help of a well-developed model, these, these well, whether they be planners or QSs, can track progress from home. Um, and what essentially is a 30 minute walk for the site manager to do this capture, then allows 20 individuals to be able to do or potentially more, 20 is just taking a number out of the sky, 20 other individuals to be able to do their jobs without needing to be on site. Um, and in a post world, in a post COVID world, this seems like something that uh, it's kind of fallen on our laps and it's, it's worked out uh, quite favorably for us. Um, <clears throat> here's a bit of a breakdown of the individual tabs within our system and their increase in usage. And uh, note here that the commercial tab in the, on, the, on the right hand side of the graph, uh, this was launched post lockdown. Um, 
we'd actually planned on launching it in June, uh, but with some of the analytics that we've been looking into, we noticed that commercial managers and QSs were struggling the most uh, with doing their regular day-to-day -day jobs from home. So we expedited the launch and released the feature in early April, uh, two, three weeks after the lockdown. And then this tool was essentially allowed commercial managers and QSs to do their jobs far more effectively and efficiently uh, from their home, which frees up a lot of their time to focus on more important tasks. Um, our overall usage is pretty stark as well, showing before and after. Um, we're seeing a lot of the habits that are being formed in this stage here, um, post lockdown, the habits that are being formed of these QSs or planners or project managers that are being able to virtually access their construction sites from home. And the important thing here is we're hoping that those habits are going to remain. And an example of that would be typically a QS or commercial manager before we launched our uh, commercial tab um, would ring up site manager and say, hey, what's the progress like in so-and-so room on so-and-so floor? Um, and in my eyes, that 10 minute conversation is a waste of time for not only the QS, but also the site manager. And that turns into 20 minutes waste of time. Um, so the release of the commercial tab in particular in this, in this instance has allowed them to not make pointless phone calls anymore, be able to do their jobs as efficiently and productively from home as they were on site. And what we're now actually seeing is our system is being used even more now that they're back sitting at their site offices. Um, and come, I think next Wednesday, 15th, we'll be able to uh, dig even deeper and see what the last four weeks have looked like as well. Um, and that's it. Uh, if anyone wants to reach out, any questions, please feel free. Uh, and I'd like to very quickly thank Phil as well for putting this together. It was a pleasure presenting to you all and uh, I hope you all enjoy the rest of your day. Oh, you killed it. I thought it was excellent. It was really good. Um, I have a question for you, but I also want to warn David Hancock while he's still in the session that we now have several questions for him. And um, we're going to open up some mics so that uh, people can put their questions directly to him, starting with Mark Coates. But let me, um, we've got a question here, Patrick, from uh, Nirav Talati. He's saying, hi, Patrick, why helmet was chosen to mount the 360 degree camera instead of drone type solutions, which would typically eliminate the need to be on site physically? I'm guessing so you have more directional accuracy and you can use the human judgment to point it in the right place. Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty much that. A 360 capture means that regardless of the height you're at, you're going to get a full view of the room. Um, and we don't want to add the complication of having something either uh, mechanically rolling on the floor or flying in the air. The simplicity of just clicking the record on a hard hat and going for a walk is, in, in our opinion, far more beneficial than having to, whether it's a controlled drone or automatically controlled drone, whatever. Um, the simplicity of having a, a camera on a hard hat is... is can't be beaten in our opinion. Okay, cool. Hey, thank you very much.